Welcome to Determined to Succeed. I'm your host, Dawn Malarney, also known as the Unique Connector. So I'm so excited to have Victoria here with me today. And so I want to kick it off of the question for you. When you hear the words of circumstances don't define you, uh, what do you think about that, Victoria? So what I think about circumstances do not define you, that mostly bring me back to my beginnings, to my childhood. And um, I would like to share with all of you that I grew up in Venezuela. My mom was a maid. My grandmother was a maid. And those were my circumstances back then. And um, I definitely did not let that define who I was as a person. At the beginning, I thought, well, maybe because that's all what my family have done so far. That's where I belong. And it was through education that I was able to see past that. I was able to see myself as something else. Back then, I thought as an engineer, but um, that you know <laughs> was not really my real calling. Um, and after that, I was very blessed to have a scholarship to go to a private school. And yes, I again, like I never let anyone tell me that because my family came from very very humble backgrounds that I was like less or that I was uh, defined by that. So definitely, I think that that what reminds me that that sentence is like, yes, definitely the circumstances doesn't matter how your economical status is right now, doesn't matter what kind of car, house you're driving, like whatever you have, that does not define who you are as a person. It goes well beyond that. And you can always become whatever you want and whatever you put your mind into. So yeah, so that what that sentence reminds me, and I and I really hope that if anyone is out there listening to this, that they know that that whatever your current circumstances are, you can overcome them. You can make your own world and your own vision. So yeah, mm, well I love that, and it, you're so humble too. You know, you can just tell your deep values on things, and you know I think it goes back to you can always achieve more, no matter what your circumstances are is you can achieve more. You know, if you're really into something or you want to be intrigued and learn more, you can do that. And you can go outside the box of maybe what your whole family has dedicated their time to and their energy over the years. But deep down, it goes back to your values. Yeah, no, you, 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 you are completely right, Don. And, um, you know, like for me, it was like, of course, like being a maid was, was nothing bad. You know, it was my mom, my grandmother, they all have been very hardworking women who taught me those values, you know, hard work, be humble, be respectful of everyone else. And those were like the fundamentals for my, you know, for my childhood. And for me more than, uh, you know, like I didn't want to make this because I, I, I don't think that that's a bad job, but because yeah. I wanted to change my family's trajectory. So at that point, you know, we were living, um, my mom was a maid in like uh, this, for this very wealthy family back in Venezuela. And we didn't even own a house. We actually lived in a space that they will provide for their workers. So for me, it's like, I always dreamed of having our own space to be able to provide my mother with, you know, like a better standard of living. Um, so for me, the, the possibility that I saw was like, well, like I'm obviously, I don't have any inheritance or any and I'm not going to be playing the lottery. That's too much chance. Um, for me, the clear path became education. Mm. I knew that if I studied hard, I could give back to my mother everything that she has done for me. Like, I remember that a couple of my early childhood memories are like, we didn't have enough money to like for everyone to be eating cheese and ham. So my mom would only buy enough for me. And she would just eat the bread alone. And, you know, mm -hmm. like those things back then really, really kind of like for me as, as, as a person. And I was like so grateful for all the, all the um, kind of risks and all the things that she did for me. Um, my mom and my aunt, they're both my, my entire family. My aunt was the cook in this house and my mom was the, in charge of the cleaning. Um, so, yeah. So, you know, like looking back, I think that, that was my main motivation to change my, my trajectory. Um, I knew back then that I, I wanted to give back to them and that I wanted to change my trajectory. There's always, even though if, if anyone feels related to, to this story, it's like, 
you could have had like a lot of generations that follow one trajectory, but that it only takes one. It only takes one person in this family tree to completely change the trajectory of the entire family. And for some reason, I had the courage to think that that was me. I was like, I'm gonna take the shot. I thought like, you know, education, it's easy. I have the books, I'm gonna work hard. I'm gonna study as hard as I can so that I can uh, provide a better future. And thankfully, I did, I was able to get a scholarship to go to private uh, school in Venezuela. So that again, opened up more opportunities for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I love that you just were so determined and that you were building that confidence. And I know you're still building on that confidence more and more. (laughs) I see it all the time since I've known you for what two months, not even. And, um, I think that's the thing too, is we're always evolving. It's not just a here, we finally hit this marker and we're good to go. We're still going and we're still working on that confidence. And so what is something, you know, even from your childhood that kind of, you know, helped instill that confidence, you know, in yourself, because that is quite a drastic move compared to your family sometimes. And so what was it that really was that pivotal moment that you're like, nope, I'm not giving up. I'm going to keep doing this and keep going forward. Then the confidence was given to me by my, my mom. My mom has been my, my mom, my aunt have been my biggest cheerleaders along the way. And, and at the same time, it was that in combination with my current circumstances. I knew okay. that. So I, I guess I like, because I knew that there was no other way for me to change the circumstances that were not good. I had to do my best. And I had a very close uh, relative um, that he used to work as a driver um, for like, again, like another wealthy family. And he ended up getting very sick and going to a public hospital in Venezuela, which that that does not, is nothing pretty looking. He like, you know, had a very, very bad stay there. And when I saw that, I promised myself, like, you know, like I want to be able to provide to my family, a, you know, better resources, better medical resources, better like living situations. So I think that like when I saw that, that was like my, my awakening on the fact that like, man, I, I, I have one shot at this thing called life. I need to give it my all and I need to do it not only for me, but for my family, like my mom, my aunt, and also for my children. Uh, because mm. I whenever, whenever I, whenever and if I have them. <laughs> um, but um, but you know, that that's kind of what motivated me at that moment. And I was only like probably around like 12 years old when that happened. And wow, that really pushed me into like, you know, like maybe I play less and I need to study more. And that for me was like, kind of like the main motivation. It's like, I I, I need to get out of these circumstances. And the only door that I saw at that point was education. Yeah. Education. Okay. Well, I love that. And now let's even just fast forward to now. So I met you what, not even two months ago and I could see it in you, (laughs) which is crazy, you know, and I felt like too instant connection with us. And I could see it in you in your eyes and you were just kind of asking me some questions about entrepreneurship and whatnot. And so I feel like this has been another pivotal moment for you and really stepping into the true essence of you, because I've even just seen the confidence and just how much you light up. And so how about you talk about that for the listeners of the drastic leap that you've taken recently? Yes. So, um, so just recently, about a month ago, I decided to go and also follow the entrepreneurial world. Um, that has always been a dream of mine to start like a like a company, start something out of nothing, like out of scratch. And that has been just very motivational lately. And you know, I, I got surrounded by very amazing people, just like you, Don. And you know, like you guys have been there and so like inspiring that I decided to also take the leap myself and going back a little bit to what was stopping me before to taking this leap too it's like and something that I would love the listeners to um hopefully if you're out there and maybe that touches this person um I was always seeking for other people's validation and others uh to tell me that I'm adding value um and it was a journey as you said at the the beginning of the conversation like it's not like we just wake up one day like that 
is a journey to understand ourselves and to understand that we do add value. Um, so kind of like going back to the my my childhood story. So I was able to get a scholarship to go to private school, never felt like I belonged to that place. Mm-hmm. Always felt like I was, was trying to fit in and I was trying to add value, trying to prove to others that I add value. And that again, probably it also helped that like to my education because I was like, well, I don't have the same economical status as you do, but here I am. What I'm bringing to the table is that I studied pretty hard and then I'm a very good student. So hopefully these other <clears throat> classmates want me in their team. Maybe I'm not like, you know, like them, but they want me in their team so that I can help them with their homework, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, th- that's what I was thinking as a teenager, you know, I just want to fit in. I don't have the money. I don't have like, you know, like I'm, I don't have the, the phones that they have. I don't have the clothing that they have, but this is what I'm bringing. So for me, it was always that. It was trying to fit in try to belong to groups and getting that approval from others. Um, And that continued along with my whole career. So after graduating Valley Victoria from my high school, I got another scholarship to come to the US to study chemical engineering at the University of Rochester in New York. And um, again, like I was like, okay, I again, I don't have money. (laughs) I don't have any of this other stuff. So what do I bring to the table is again, like, you know, education and trying to fit in into the groups. Again, like I, my English was very bad. I was taking ESL classes. And for those who don't know what that means, it's English as a second language. So okay. that's what ESL classes are. Um, and, you know, I was always trying to fit in. I was trying to get rid of my accent, which <laughs> very hard to do, believe me, I have tried. Um, but, you know, like, again, like then I was always trying to fit in into like, obviously, like a culture that was not mine, people that look completely different than I looked. Um, so, so I have always been trying to seek that, like the approval, try to fit in into different groups, just by like not even being myself, but just trying to like blend in, blend in, be like a fly in the wall so that hopefully they just let you be in that group and, you know, mm-hmm. not be seen, not be heard. And that was me pretty much throughout college. I was just trying to fit in, seek for approval until I knew a couple months ago, (laughs) you know, that happened as well in the workplace. I was always trying to work hard, the hardest of everyone so that I can seek that approval. Someone else to tell me, hey, you actually are good. Let me, let me pat you in the head, you know, so it was not until I got surrounded by the right people, people that like really were more um, into like seeing the bigger picture and understanding themselves that I was able to figure out and finally realize that I do add value. And I don't, right now I'm not seeking anyone else's validation, but I have finally come to realize that I am valuable and that I have something to bring to the table. And again, like I'm inviting you, you listeners that if you, I also have something valuable. You are important and you don't need anyone else to tell you so. Um, so, so yeah. So if you have a dream or something like don't, don't wait for the perfect situation and don't wait for someone else to tell you that, oh yeah, you, you are smart or like you are ready. Like you have to realize those things on your own. And, you know, at this point I'm like, wow, like it feels so much more better to have my own validation than to seek for others. Like it comes with a piece of mine. Um, I mean, I'm still working hard. I'm still doing all the things that I love doing, but it is different. It takes a stress and also um, kind of like that. Yeah, like that stress away from like, you know, from from the everyday because before I, I got one validation, but then I felt like, oh, I'm in this like kind of like hamster wheel, like, you know, yeah. always trying to seek for more, like, oh, what else can I do? And like, you know, to, to keep seeking for approval. And um, now I have finally realized that, no, I, I don't need any of that. And, and yeah, mm-hmm. that's how, and when then like, just like three weeks ago, I decided to open my, my own CPA firm. Um, and, you know, finally, because I realized that I realized that, yes, I, I do have to add value. I have something to bring to the table and Yes, and I'm very excited. Again, like it, it was everything happened like perfectly in the way that like it came to my own realization 
my own value. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm very energized, very happy to start this journey. I mean, like, do I have everything figured out? Absolutely not. Right. Yeah, but it's a journey. Like I was telling Don, uh, every day there is a high and there is a low. Um, but you know, it's it's part of the journey and it's a self exploration, and it's just wonderful. Yeah, it, well, it it's been fantastic. Yeah. Well, it's such a beautiful story, and I think that's too. Hopefully, the listeners are realizing like, no journey looks the same. Circumstances you know, we all have them in different ways. You know, we could analyze them all, uh, and make excuses. I feel like almost, but deep down it is goes back to that reminder of, we need to validate ourselves because very similar to you is I was always kind of looking for that recognition. Or if someone tells me I'm doing a great job, sometimes I would ignore it, you know, instead of, even though that was what I was searching for, you know, I was looking for some validation, but I would just fluff it off, you know, just cause that mm-hmm. was kind of the norm and it was just keep go, 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 go. And I just love that you've had this interesting journey of life and you've built the confidence. You've gone back to your deep values and to be very humble, but also to, to show up as your best self and to be in your true essence, because I've seen kind of some of the different roadblocks course, we're all going to have that in life, (laughs) but you're just keep going and you're understanding more of even the deep down values that your family installed on you. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yes. And and that's like, I'm glad you point that out too, because it's like, yeah, like those values were kind of like the the fundamentals to, to who I have become, you know, like, yeah, without them, like the working hard and knowing that like, you know, it sounds hard sometimes, but like life really doesn't owe you anything. you know, and, and, and that's what I learned very early on. So like I, my mom was a single mother. I have no siblings. So pretty much like my family is my mom, my aunt, who is the mm-hmm. sister of my mom and me. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, like for me, it was like, absolutely life does not owe me anything. And I need to understand that. and know that like, if I want to change something, I need to take action. You know, nothing is going to be just gifted to me because <laughs> because it's me but um yeah. you know, so so I encourage everyone out there that like you know just pursue what your goals are work hard at it and just add value once you start adding value just like you do Don like you add value to everyone in our community you're you're so wonderful to all of us that got the the blessing of meeting you uh you know and sweet but that, that's the wonderful thing it's like once you start adding value it, it all comes around, you know? So, so yeah, no, that, that's kind of what, what I would like to also share. Oh, well, I love that. And I, I know too, recently you just went back home. And so even talk about that. How is that moment of you going home and to talk about your business and to talk about the leap that you did and how that experience was to be back with your family? Yeah. So, yeah. So my, my grandmother actually just turned 100 years old oh, it's crazy. and it was, yeah, she's, oh my God. And, you know, we had a moment of like her, she was sharing like some of her advice of like, you know, like, again, like work hard, always be honest and be humble for us. Be humble is, is very important, you know, because in my family, that is very, it's one of the strong values. Um, and yeah, we actually visited the place where she used to work as a maid when we were there in Ecuador. Uh, so my, so I'm sorry if I'm confusing the listeners, but I was born in Venezuela, but my family is originally from Ecuador. Okay. So my grandmother lives in Ecuador and we went and visited the place where she used to work. And, you know, it was, it was so interesting because like to be able to see all the changes that has led us to the point, you know, to the point right now. And, you know, like back then it was just like, so much deeper and my grandmother didn't even finish like elementary school wow yeah and, like my my mom didn't like finish high school but that that was it um so to see all these changes and now to understand that like wow like I actually have a master's like you know like and this is only like three generations um so again like for me that was very rewarding to go back and see them and and you know like And beyond that, it's like seeing my mom, my aunt and being able to now provide for them and being able to be, to be there for them now, you know, to, to be able to be prepared that like, oh, we don't have any like food issues anymore that we used to have, like even like basic necessities that a lot of people may get for granted. Like those were a struggle back then. And, you know, like 
just it's very rewarding and it, and it kind of helped me to take a moment and take a like a mindful intentional moment and be like wow here I am with my family like if my my 12 year old self who see this I feel like she will be crying <laughs> honestly right yeah and as I tell you like kind of like tear up in the inside mm-hmm. it's like wow because sometimes we go through all these motions and you know we go like after it and after it and after it and yeah sometimes I, for me that was the moment for to be intentional and stop and be like wow look at where we have come not by myself only but as a family and you know like thinking back it's like wow like I would have never like even when I was like 12, I never imagined I would even come to this country, you know, like I always saw the United States in movies and I always thought that only the very fancy people came here. No. So, <laughs> well, you so, should be so, yeah. so proud of yourself, <laughs> you know, cause that is amazing. And it's so amazing too, that you can kind of see the path. And I hope you celebrated yeah. that moment because I bet your family is so dang proud of you. And so, <laughs> you know, even as you reflect on all of this, you know, what would you have told your younger self? now that you've experienced this and now what you know? Yeah, I would say that I would reassure her that the, the circumstances not define her, that she's not less um, just because of like being the daughter of a maid. Um, so I will tell her, yes, like education is the key. But at the same time, I will, I will tell her to also, you know, like cherish every single stage of your life because like as I we were talking about the external validation I always felt like you know go 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 I have this very specific goal and sometimes we do need to stop so I I will also tell her that and I will also tell her that she's valuable she's valuable and that she is good she's good enough and Mm. and she and that I, I you will figure out that she doesn't need to to be always seeking the external validation of someone else to tell her that she's okay, that she's good. So mm-hmm. yeah, so I will tell her that. Um, and yeah, so yeah, no, it's it has been a crazy journey, but it has been, you know, very, very rewarding. But we need to stop sometimes and kind of like, like you said, like, you know, give give ourselves a hug, which is a practice that I just recently started doing. Ooh, so okay. I in the mornings, I hug myself. Aww. It sounds a little bit weird, but I hug myself and I say like, you're doing okay you're doing a good job like it's because sometimes we need that um we do I have been in that kind of situations too it's like am I doing enough I have been so blessed with this opportunity to be in this country with this was like not even my wildest dreams I would have thought that like oh my god I'm actually gonna own a CPA practice in Madison Wisconsin (laughs) like that was not even like I didn't even know what a CPA was back then (laughs) you know it's like so crazy to me and but at the same time, you know, like because of all these amazing opportunities, I always thought that like, oh my God, I need to be thankful and I need to give it my best shot and forgot a lot of the time to stop and breathe and be like, let me, you know, I may not be where I want to be, you know, like I'm not at, at, at the top of the of the mountain, but man, like I have climbed quite a bit by now. So yeah. like, stop and I'm like, you know, kind of cherish that and enjoy that. So yeah, I'm sorry. That was kind of a long answer. No. Well, and I love that because it's, you know, you're enjoying the ride. And that's where I think sometimes we forget that we need to enjoy where we're at and, you know, be present. And I think that's the thing too. It's like, you've been laying out the groundwork. You probably wouldn't have been ready to do this five years ago. And that's where I think it's, you know, an interesting experience. We need to go through life in order to understand things more or to really develop what those true values are. And I think of even for you now that you are running your own business, Mm -hmm. you have your own like values when you're running your business. And so I think that's, what's kind of interesting where I would love for you to kind of even tell the listeners of like what you want to do with this business now. Yeah. So tell me more. Yeah. So absolutely. So so I founded, uh, it's called Novi CPA. Um, and the main values here is like a relationship. It's like very relationship-based, not transactional at all. Like, and that's what I'm seeking, um, you know, creating relationships with my clients and being able to help them um, grow their businesses and like, and being, being able to personalize, like, you know, like any service to like, you can be a solopreneur and, and I can add value to you and I can help you depending on your needs. Same thing with like, if you're like a, a bigger size, medium size business. So 
for me, it is that like having relationships with people, with these entrepreneurs, like adding value to them, knowing that like I am cheering them along. Like I, I'm not just here like, hey, here's my invoice and bye. I see you next year when I prepare your tax return. <laughs> but it is more than that. It's, it's like we were saying about like talking about like creating a community. That's what I would like. That's what I'm like focusing on, creating a community where I'm part of that team that is cheering along all these business owners do amazing things. And hopefully I'm trying to localize more in the Madison area. Um, so, so yeah, because Madison is very close to my heart. It has been so wonderful. It's very supportive community. And that's what I want to add to, to, to the table and, you know, create that relationship with clients and be there for them, personalized to whatever they need. And yeah, so that's, that's kind of like the, the idea and the values, like the respect, the, the cherishing each other and beyond any transactional uh, relationship, mm -hmm. but more of like a, a true profound, like we're in a team relationship. Yeah. Well, I love that. And that's where, you know, I hope the listeners find some inspiration, but also know of another resource that's in our community. <laughs> and also too, just how much you care. And that's where I'm so thankful we met. There's a reason I feel like we meet certain people and you know, I'm going to be rooting you on and I know you're shining bright and I can just see how much you're just the essence of you and how much you're shining brighter, even in the last two months. And so I'm so proud of you. Keep it up and know I'm always here, but also too, I would love for our listeners to connect with you. I'm going to add your information to the link of all the podcasts and YouTube stuff, but you know, keep shining bright, Victoria, be proud of yourselves. And I think too, you're going to have to, you're going to listen to this. I think when you get in those low moments, you know, and so Absolutely. other people too, when you get in a low moment, listen to this because circumstances do not define us. And so I'm so proud of you, Victoria. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Don. And thank you for inspiring me to become better every day. Um, again, like to the listeners, surround yourself with people that lift you and people that are cheering you along. Like those are your tribe. So, mm. so yeah. So thank you so much for, for having me. And thank you so much. I, I hope the listeners connect with me. I always love connecting with people, grabbing a cup of coffee. So feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. And yes, thank you so much. Thank you.